obviously uh, postal networks predated independence um, because African states, with the exception of Ethiopia, were colonies and therefore they inherited the colonial administration and with that the postal system and the, uh, the postal infrastructure. But um, upon independence, of course, um, they sometimes struggled to maintain that infrastructure and postal system because decolonization occurred very rapidly. In, in certain instances like the Congo, um, it was almost overnight that independence was um, given to the Congo. So there was a, a, st a struggle to maintain the, the infrastructure and so on. But the, the other issue is that uh, these colonies had been um, dependencies on colonial powers and they were members of the UPU by virtue of that relationship with those mother countries. So the colonies were UPU members and therefore they did benefit from uh, this international system. But um, what, and when uh, colonization or, or decolonization occurred, states became independent uh, in the 60s, which is the period that I'm talking about. Um, for instance, in 1964, there were 22 African states that were members um, of the UPU at, at that time when they met and signed the uh, constitution in, in Vienna. Um, but then, of course, um, most states that became independent were automatically admitted to the UPE, UPU. But then there were states, um, secessionist states, uh, unilaterally independent states, rebel states, if you like, um, that weren't given membership. Okay, I, I spent the day in the archives yesterday trying to ascertain whether they actually applied for membership, and I, I wasn't able to find any documentation to that effect and I can only assume that they, they didn't um, but they did issue stamps nonetheless even though they were not admitted to the UPU they weren't members of the UPU and they did so of course to assert sovereignty and um, but the, the the mother countries and I'm talking about three states in my paper I'm talking about um, Katanga which broke away from Congo I'm talking about uh, Biafra, which broke away from um, Nigeria. Both those countries um, were not recognized by the international community. They didn't become members of the United Nations and therefore had no standing in, in the uh, UPU. Um, Rhodesia was a, a, the other case that I'm looking at. Um, they were still legally part of the British Empire, still deemed to be a colony. Uh, and their postal services uh, were not recognised, although stamps were used to send mail to Britain, um, and only and the British government did respond by declaring certain of their issues invalid, and therefore imposed some sort of sanctions on um, on the use of a certain Rhodesian stamps. Well, member states in this case. Um, Nigeria and uh, the Congo, Congo Leopold, Leopoldville, um, were, member, were members of the Union. And when these secession, secession of states broke away, they wrote to the Director General of the UPU and um, informed them that these states were issuing stamps illegally, that they were invalid and that they should notify UPU members not to accept them. Okay. The UPU uh, du duly did that. Uh, they sent out circulars to that effect. And so in that sense, the, the UPU's role was actually to reinforce non-recognition of the sovereignty of these breakaway states. Um, and that, that was true not only, as I say, of Biafra Bi and Katanga, um, but also of Rhodesia. So in effect, um, the rules or the norms of sovereignty that prevailed in the 1960s uh, were reinforced by the UPU.